uh, then we use the Chinese letter for a long time. And then Chinese letters are very difficult to write. So there were huge gap between the uneducated and poor um, people uh, versus uh, educated and highly educated and rich people. So uh, in Joseon era, uh, the King Sejong made the, the Korean and it's phonetic. So it's easy to read and write. And my name is one of the pure, <laughs> pure Korean that doesn't contain any Chinese letters. And it has um, two meanings. Uh, one is means beautiful. <laughs> you say aramdaptai, which is it's beautiful. And it's a unit of uh, hug. So back in the day, people measure the tree with the hug. And then this is a one atom and if, there's a two hugs, then it's a two atom, three atom, four atom. So it's a one uh, unit of a hug. <laughs> um, it was so trendy. So when I was in uh, Korea uh, in school and there are so many atoms. So I was the third atom in the class. So <clears throat> yes. <laughs> and I immigrated to Canada in 2016. Uh, I moved from one country to another, affected hugely in this specific work, Hoping for Hope. Um, and I will talk about it a bit later. And so I moved to Canada in 2016. So my education, except for MFA at Concordia University, is all happened in Korea and Korean educational system. And uh, so in mid nineties, I was in the elementary school um, and I was taught that unite reunification between North Korea and South Korea is like something that we must do. There's uh, no other options. And uh, we hear the, we sing a song like, this, I'm gonna ch check. So this lyric is literally our wishes reunification. So this song was very popular. <clears throat> and also when I grew up, uh, multiculturalism is not a, was not a thing. <laughs> I was taught that the homogeneous nation Korea is, uh, you must proud of homogeneous, like we are living in the homogeneous nation, which is very problematic, but um, at the time, the, there was no concept of it. Uh, so I <laughs> share my personal story. I think it will connect to my work at the end, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> and I'm gonna talk about the general work making uh, before going to Hoping for Hope. So, <laughs> oh, I, I didn't mention about the, I had a, had a musical background, I think, and I introduced me as a musician. I was in a band for 10 years when I was in Korea. And actually that was how I learned contemporary art. I was playing uh, in many different uh, public art programs, community art programs, and then even in the demonstration scene, is that the right word? Like. Um, the political demonstration scene. And then I met so many people. And at, also at the time, the experimental sound art in Korea and um, the experimental music scene also emerged together and then they are making an exhibition. So I was in the beginning 
uh, when I started my BFA, I was making the interactive sound art installations, uh, very different from now. And before even going to BFA, I was also interested in the Korean traditional painting. So I was like all of all the places. Um, as, sorry, about my, my dog is barking. Suma, sorry about this. He wanted to say something, I guess. Okay. Okay, sorry. As you can see, <laughs> my background is all over the place and my artwork making is also all over the place. Uh, I used to think that that is a bad thing, but I think it's different. I don't think like that anymore. I think it's pretty common. Uh, uh, painter makes VR piece, it's not surprising also, like I'm talking about the history uh, in my work and then the other work talks about Twitter, for example, it's not surprising. Uh, it, I think it gets more acceptable. And I think our, our generation <laughs> is like, we are, around uh, with uh, too much information and too many distraction and then uh, all the combination of those and then uh, easy access on the certain media, for example, like a 3D rendering is way easier compared to before or even like taking a photo and camera, video editing, etc. <laughs> so I think it's very common and I don't think it's a bad thing, but still I have a hard time to explain it in short, especially like when I talk uh, like an elevator pitch, then it's, it's really hard. So today I choose <laughs> the food to explain my work. It's very cheesy way to explain, but I decided to be with food. So I choose the bibimbap and salad bibimbap and salad. So ingredient is muse. <laughs> I read muse. Uh, I am interested in contemporary issues, uh, where I am and what I'm seeing and uh, what makes my life. Uh, so I'm interested in and also social medias and sometimes books. <laughs> and plus I put my juicy experience. <laughs> and I use the rule set or game-like environment to communicate better in my work. Uh, I think you will see in a minute, since I use quite a lot of cultural references, uh, it's very tricky um, when you put those things in your work because like some audience understand certain uh, cultural reference or some are not and maybe they have a different uh, different meaning on the same object uh, same thing so I try to guide the audience to follow um, those rule set so that they can understand a little bit better uh, it can be limiting to <laughs> uh, like because I'm guiding the audience to a certain way can be limiting but at the like i'm putting so many stuff in my work <laughs> so i think there are still like things they can explore i believe uh and i like sort of science i mean uh because it's showing the belief system i'm interested in the belief system how we build it how we break them uh, and internet <laughs> uh, talks quite a lot of the internet culture or by internet culture because it's really hard to separate from my life and I think many people uh, feel this I think same and um, also technology that I'm not talking about the techno like cutting edge technology I'm more interested in the the technology that you, we use every single day. So it's um, part of our body and part of our life. Um, yeah. And I will go. So I introduced my name and my background and I'm gonna talk about my work, uh, Hopping for Hope. 
uh, Hoping for Hope has a few different elements. Uh, main element is map. Uh, and this is the, it's a series of work and it has, I made this one in 2018 and other works I made in 2019 and 20. So this is the something that I first made in this series. Uh, so as you can see, oh, nope. Uh, yes. <laughs> As you can see, there's a lines and there's a word map and you see the bars. So it's screenshot from Google Maps. And if you go a little closer, there is a little point <laughs> and some overlap of uh, letters and colors and lines. Um, maps are very political. Um, is it, it, it has been political subject. Um, I think when you, we think of how we used and how we make uh, maps, it's, it's really hard to think separately from the nationalistic view or colonialistic view. Um, even before Google, it was a kind of a difficult subject. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe Canada has a similar thing with other uh, countries. Uh, Korea is fighting really hard with uh, Japan against Japan uh, about the little little island called Ulungdo. Like they are they are saying it's mine, and then they called it in different way. And Japan also claims that that's theirs, and always like a. It was an issue that the world map included that as a Japan or Korea or even like the East Sea of Korea called Japan Sea. Then Korea <laughs> uh, was very upset about it. So it's 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 very clearly political, and globalism happened, and internet helps uh, globalism goes uh, bigger, and we have a Google company that is global, and they there made a map. Um, so I think the news that I saw, this was I think 2012 and 2013, around that time there was so many uh, news that talks about uh, how Google Maps are problematic. Um, oh, so it's about the Gulf and how they naming <laughs> the certain sea and certain parts uh, on their map. And this is Indian version and global version. So uh, Google is global company. But, and Google made a map, but the, we don't have one single map uh, per, perspective towards map, and we don't have the same borderlines. Um, for example, Indian claims their land is like this, and but then there's a China, they are fighting. Uh, so, uh, global version when you open it like in America or in Canada, which are not uh, related to this fighting, <laughs> then you will see this is contest area. That, the, how they uh, show is like with the dots. And then it's really hard to avoid to be in that fighting. So they decided, Google decided to apolitical. So they change the borderline view depending on where you are. Um, so that's how they <laughs> deal with this issue. So these are all the news that I researched. So this is another one that US Google map and users in China, users in India. Uh, the people think that it's very simple to use the VPN to see this type of difference, but the Google map actually contain, uh, collects way more data than, I mean, way more data than the VPN. So they collect the Wi-Fi that you've been connected right before you use the VPN and your location also. And 
other stuff. So it's really hard to look uh, approach to that uh, border uh, with just a VPN. And um, this was like a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, I used this uh, issue to my work uh, and I made it 2018. And oftentimes that uh, many artists to use the certain issue or um, certain things or certain technologies and a few years later it kind of not making any sense because it changes so quickly and they are not using it anymore so i was thinking maybe i'm it's not updated and um I saw this Netflix series called The Social Dilemma, and then they were talking about even Google search change the research depending on where you are. So it's still going on. Uh, and I immigrate uh, from Korea to Canada, and I so it's I am confused by this uh, the borderline policies by Google company. Where I'm standing is where my thoughts and politics belong. They is is that like how they think? And to me, it's not. So I um, that's how I, I am. I was interested in this issue, and uh, when I move from Korea to Canada in 2016, I feel like physically disoriented. Do you know those like moments that you are so online and you feel like you're not actually being at sight? I think many people feel this uh, phenomena uh, and I feel so much when I, uh, especially when I moved, uh, at the time I, I didn't speak well enough in English, I mean, I got a little better now, but at the time it was so English was not my like a in con comfortable range, and I didn't speak uh, French, and I still <laughs> not. Uh, so it was like I can't communicate with uh, where I am and the people uh, in Montreal and. Also, at the time, I didn't go to school, so I was totally just isolated with this internet. And in Korean online community, there's a Me Too movement going on, and then I am absolutely <laughs> related to that issue. So I feel like physically something is going on and disoriented. Uh, and so when I make these things uh, in 2018, I combine those uh, physical feeling and also uh, the borderlines. And also 2018, uh, I think I think that's the year that Donald Trump decided to make the wall on boulders. And funnily, so they are talking about border so many uh, everywhere we are talking about border and then how arbitrary the border line is how weird that is and also weirdly i think it's the, in 2018 the north korea and south korea presidents met in dmz the demilitary zone between the north and south korea so it kind of like makes me think back uh, to see those um the the Google Maps again, and they think my uh, physical, emotional uh, phenomena and all these issues around me. So <laughs> I've come to understand borderlines lines like a game of hopscotch. Uh, so hopscotch is an international game. Um, I didn't know, but then I tried to translate the uh, tangtamoki, and then I just I noticed that this is an international game. Um, so uh, leading me to create the version of game that used the geographical borderlines generated by Google Maps. Uh, so I used the Korean version of hopscotch. It has a little bit different rule. So in Korea, hopscotch rules are a bit different than in the West. When you finish hop hopping, 
through all the numbers, you must toss a stone in the air uh, with your eye closed, actually tossed back. And the area that a uh, stone lands on belongs to you and other player can't step on it. <laughs> and that's yours, so you can, you don't need to hop there. In that area, you can put, to, uh, you can put your two uh, feet and you can stand, you can sit, you can lie down <laughs> as much as you want. So um, through uh, these types of arbitrary ag, you end up with a section of territory that you must do. You must try to keep and protect as a child. This was a fun game, but as an adult, it has led me to ask serious questions about the nature of borders, land ownership, and geographical data. So I'm going to show you the video. Um, this one doesn't have a sound. So this is the uh, tutorial video um, that explain how to play this hopscotch game because I used the Korean version of it. And I got inspired by the, the I don't know how to say pseudoscience aesthetic in YouTube because it's uh, it's very arbitrary and you just have to believe and I wanted to use those uh, elements on it. I, so there was a unicorn. I saw <laughs> the meme a uh, few months ago that talks about digital art that include unicorn you have to avoid. <laughs> and then I was like, feeling a little <laughs> shame because <laughs> I have a unicorn on it. Uh, so you throw and it lands on to number one. And you have to hop. Up from two, I am going. <laughs> I'm hopping, <laughs> and you clear, and you throw the ball, and I'm gonna toss. <laughs> Close your eyes. <laughs> when did I toss? Okay, and I got the 19. And this is the, I'm, I put the other things and Chukchipo. This is, I'm going to talk about very short. Uh, and I include those uh, researches that I create. So I combined all the maps that I can get. And then I put it. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. So chip chip up. <laughs> so I made uh, this map and the tutorial. Uh, I think that was the first one. And then I decided to make a little more because there were uh, other things I want to talk a little more like um, the issues um, between the North and South and then all those things that I got from the previous video. Um, and I used the chukchipap. So I'm gonna talk about what chukchipap is. <laughs> hey, chukchipap is um, uh, Korean, but not pure Korean. So it can be <laughs> written in Chinese letter. Uh, <laughs> So it has a, it, every single thing has a meaning. Um, chuk means a shrink or smaller, and ji means land and ground or earth. Bob is way or how to. So chuk ji bob is the way you shrink the earth or the land. So it's a transportation magic. <laughs> um, you can, uh, you can transport yourself to one or the other, one to another. But then um, it's not using those science. It's more, I think it's more clever. <laughs> it's a shrink the word. So you're very calm and you're slow. You don't need to jump. You just like uh, walk one step, then 
where did you shrink? So you go from Montreal to London, <laughs> just do with one step. Uh, and here's other reference about around the Chukchipop. So in Korea, ability of Chukchipop <laughs> was attributed, attributed to North Korean leader Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il in the propaganda song, the general uses uses warp uh, in Korean, 장군님 축지법 쓰신다. So I was familiar with this as a joke or as a meme or uh, on, the, on online. And then I found these. So this one is my old, uh, I used to live in Hapjong in Seoul and it's near Hapjong station and you can see Chukjipbap <laughs> and Bihengsu, which is the academy for Chukjipbap. So you can learn there. I think it closed now. I researched and then it's not showing on map anymore. <laughs> and there's a Chukjipbap uh, Bible or book lessons. <laughs> And YouTube has everything. So I found actually the YouTube tutorial or practice, people practice Chukchipa. And I used it to my work. Uh, so this is the, the person who are practicing the Chukchipa. And I put that thing, I'm gonna show you the... Um, video. So So I created uh, this dance dance revolution style chukchipbap practice with your phone. <laughs> so chukchipbap, the I come, it's to me it was directly to uh, it remind me the Google Maps <laughs> when you it's a folded and sharing the world on your hand, and I think it's I thought it was a good way to express those. Um, disoriented feeling or you can move uh, one to the other with the folding the earth so I created this movement and then the people uh, will follow and then so another step in the step <laughs> and this is Montreal I think it's Papino and it goes to Korea and Montreal again St. Catherine And it goes to Pyongyang, but before Pyongyang, it goes to the, the northeast part of South Korea. <laughs> so you can actually see the North Korea from there. And it goes to Pyongyang. And I navigate myself <laughs> with the phone.
it's supposed to be fun. <laughs> so I hope you laugh. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was my second video. Okay, I show the video. So it goes. Yes, and I'm going to talk about rocks. Um, so after this, I created the rock. So when you actually do the hopscotch game, then you toss these rocks. So I used the, just a stone or pebble uh, from the street, and then I decided to embed the Google, the digital image on that so that, you know, rocks are actually part of this earth and then it contains a lot of uh, geological, <laughs> geological data. And I want the visually, I want it to be combined with uh, digital aspect. Is that making sense? <laughs> so, this is the rocks. So um, this is very clear image. Uh, I have one here. So when you just to look at it, it doesn't really stand out as a different type of rocks. <laughs> but when you close, it has a little bit of a uh, little bit of yeah things. <laughs> uh, so I photo transfer the Google image I printed and I photo transfer on the rocks. And this is uh, the clear image. And then I create this one in <laughs> uh, when I have a residency at Banff. Um, so it's very new. Uh, so those the moment of the Google map goes like jumping from one to another and it's shrink in a way that like the digital images collapse and uh, I feel the speed or movement in it and also something that is not real so I create digital version of rocks with those um, those patterns. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to talk about the uh, name. <laughs> so this is a little bit uh, side work of Hopping for Hope. Uh, so it's not about the the hopscotch uh, game or any dance dance revolution game but i it's uh i was traveling from toronto to montreal i think before covid uh so a few years ago with other friends and i think i got the free ride so i was listening this google map is uh, navigating us uh to montreal and then uh from Ottawa and Quebec and there's like road names are changing but our Google uh, assistant <laughs> uh, can't change their language right away and still in the English set and then mispronounce all those um, all those uh, French names and uh, I and people laugh at it in the car and i was like oh it's it's i think uh just uh to be honest i think i i just feel attached to this uh, the glitched uh, <laughs> the sound and this mispronunciation that's what i'm doing all the time when i speaking in english or even french it's harder <laughs> and and even the google has a Mm, technology for French, English, everything, and they can translate. They can uh, the mixed language, but they can't. They didn't put that in, I guess, Google Map uh, uh, in in the Google Map. So I record all those names that this uh, kind Google Assistant mispronounced <laughs> the road name and also road name has the colonial 
view of it. <laughs> I mean, it, and also history of the land. And so I, I record it. I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to show this. So. And I put the metronome. Turn right onto Rue de la Montaigne. In 150 meters, turn left onto Rue Aylmer. Turn left onto Rue Aylmer. And you can feel it's kind of wrong. <laughs> it's not natural. I, I, even though you don't know how to pronounce right way, it, there is a little like a glitch that like we're fast and then I emotionally attached and also I am generally interested in names. Um, oh, I, so uh, I guess I didn't show the, my name piece. <laughs> um, do you hear? Aaron. I record all my mispronounced name, <laughs> name in Montreal and then asking people to pronounce my name. And uh, I made a piece out of it and I, thing I'm interested in name and as a sound that is uh, the most often that you listen in your whole life your name and also a naming is political <laughs> uh, and I was interested in I was working on other uh, piece that talks about the, the AI assistance and the, their voice and I found this book. Uh, oop. Wire for speech, and and there's a research uh, about the tend to change our own voice depending on the voice we are talking to, even though it's so we know it's a synthetic voice, computer generated voice. Uh, uh, I mean, in the book, it's only. Uh, researched with uh, 100 or 200 people. So maybe we can critique on that. It's, uh, it's not like a 100% truth. Everybody does that. I can't say that. But then there is other research also showing similar things. So um, we even though this, there is a hierarchy between the human listening this and then we act like, ah, you la laugh at it. And I wanted to include those uh, things to uh, the work. <laughs> and then I put these two monitors, uh, like a tempo at the same time, this kind of like a, you are driving, <laughs> okay. And last part. So I this work was actually the most difficult to put all together and explain in one word. And I also thinking of the space, uh, exhibition space as a space and land that I can uh, display these things uh, as my this season goes and I wanted to map the space out and so <laughs> uh, how how I can make a borderlines how I can make this uh, exhibition space as a as a land as a land yeah <laughs> so I'm gonna show you <laughs> uh, this one so I used the international uh, cartography symbols <laughs> to make. There's like a you know when you when you put the rivers and when you put the church, when you put the house, and you put the, the there is all symbols. So I use those symbols to map my other works together. And also I used the. Um, uh, the GPS information as well as a number there. And I'm going to show there. 
uh, and IP addresses and satellite calculation icons as aesthetic motif to connect all the components. So this is at the new gallery. Uh, and I put things there. I think it's all. 